all the stars we see, including our own sun, are hydrogen rich. But most of space seems dark. Between the stars, nothing glows to eye or camera. In the years after World War II, the new technology of radar and radio was put to astronomical use to search for radiation no eye can see. The first hydrogen signal from the darkness was picked up in March 1951 by Doc Ewan, a grad student fresh from the Navy, and his advisor, Ed Purcell. The two men took us to the roof of the physics lab at Harvard, where they had excitedly made their discovery long before. I think it's right here, Ed. I think this is the one here. Right, and we just took the glass out, put the horn, the throat of the horn in there, and looked out here to the south. This old horn is a microwave antenna able to pick up weak signals from space. Originally, we didn't know whether the radio waves uh, would actually uh, be detectable. And uh, the only thought at the time was if they were, they probably would be concentrated somewhere along the Milky Way. And as a result, the best place to be looking would be toward the south, in the vicinity just north of Sagittarius, which is the center of the Milky Way, or our galaxy and uh, just take a chance on the fact that there's a great concentration of material there. Well, actually, a good deal had been deduced from rather indirect evidence by the astrophysicists concerning the gas in our galaxy. And uh, people knew it was mostly hydrogen and that it was very uh, empty. There were very few gas atoms per cubic centimeter. And in this empty thing, they're emitting this very faint, very characteristic radiation. Ewan and Purcell opened a whole new window for astronomers. Their receiver detected a spectral line of hydrogen that occurs as a radio wave. Hydrogen atoms emit light by a jump down the quantum ladder from a higher energy state to a lower one. It is no different for this radio jump, but the starting state, known as the hyperfine level, is so close to the lowest state that you have to magnify by a millionfold to see the tiny separation. Even from the coldest regions of space, hydrogen can send out such low energy emission. The amount of hydrogen out there and its temperature was such that the radiation at this frequency that we're concerned with, this very special frequency, amounted to only one watt landing on the entire Earth. To attempt to detect uh, signal of that intensity. Less than uh, a million millionth part of a watt, as far as what I was dealing with, uh, would be extremely difficult even building an excellent radar receiver. I was concerned that we might be dealing downstream somewhere with a negative thesis. And that a negative thesis is extremely difficult and could take an extra year or two uh, to tidy up and calibrate and put some numbers on it. If you don't detect something, then you must carefully state at what level you are capable or incapable of detecting it. So uh, that was my concern. Ed's comment to that was, so it's a couple of years of your life, and, uh, but it's certainly worth it. And if you do detect it, you'll be in Life magazine. And he was right. <laughs> he did. Purcell bet right though Doc still had to work hard to succeed. Well, as I remember, it was in the morning. See, he'd been up all night, and I'd been at home in bed. And as I remember, he said, I think I have a thesis. And I came dashing over. It was over the weekend of uh, uh, Easter, and the first time it was turned on, the scanning was such as I was tuning, looking for this hydrogen hyperfine station broadcasting from space, I was tuning through the spectrum, as you might just turn a knob, and I noticed at the end of the first scan, the signal was on its way up. And here on the Esterline paper from the Esterline Angus recorder, you know, it looked, this wiggly line looked as though there might be some bumps in it. And we rolled out about 20 feet of it and got down and sighted along it, you see, and then we could see this bump like that. It's just the way you designed it. It's just the way you thought about it. There's just a chill goes up your back and you say, I got it. 
And yeah. you just never, ever forget the excitement of doing something like that. And yet, it's so common in the field of science to go through these steps and feel that excitement. It's just beautiful. The space between the stars is filled with thin, cold hydrogen gas. That horn had caught the signal. 